So in this video, I wanna dive just a little bit deeper into the specifics of some of the parameter controls of our material properties. So just so you know, Substance does have some fantastic documentation on this. So if you just go to the uh, Substance documentation, the stager documentation, and you scroll down here to materials, if you click on this, you get a pretty good overview of what each one of those parameters does. Lots of them have some pictures that showcase some different things. Some of them, which are very, very straightforward, like the base color, keeps it short and sweet and simple and straightforward. The base color is the color of the surface. So we're gonna start there, but I'm not gonna cover all of these in this video. I'm gonna cover kind of the main ones you should be aware of, but just so you know, you do have some of these available to you uh, so you can dive in and kind of figure them out a little bit. So, substance and stager assets. Okay, here we go. Um, in order to get to the materials, again, you wanna just make sure that you're on the materials tab here in the properties panel. Um, if you don't see that, it's probably because you're at the parent level, you just wanna make sure you're at the child level. Um, it doesn't matter which one of these you select, all it's all the same material, um, but just make sure that you have one of them selected. Um, let me go down here. We're gonna start with the, the base color again. So we're just gonna go ahead and just uh, make a little color here that we like. All right, great. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to activate our ray tracer uh, just so you can get a better uh, accurate uh, indication of what we're actually changing here. So, uh, and so if you see it get a little fuzzy, if it takes a little while to load, you'll know why. Uh, metallic. So this is an interesting slider. So normally all, most of these sliders are on a ranging scale from like zero to one, you can, or, or even higher, you can, you can push past the slider amount. Metallic, on the other hand, is something that you really either want it to be on or off. Uh, metalness is uh, a bit of a binary thing. So objects are either metal or they're not. Um, and leaving the slider in the middle will actually cause some, uh, it'll cause the calculation to not be 100% accurate because the way that Substance calculates their shaders is through a process called PBR, uh, physically based rendering. We're basically through these sliders of uh, color, roughness, metallic, you're able to simulate what real materials act like in real world situations. So just know that it's designed to be zero, like either on or off, but you do have the ability to slide it in there. Okay, so that's metallicness, roughness. So roughness is how, uh, I, think, I like to think of it as like paint when you're painting the wall, whether it's super matte or super glossy. So roughness, we have it turned now all the way down to zero. It is like perfectly pure glossy. When you turn it up to one full roughness, now it's, it becomes very matte in color. So we'll go ahead and leave that somewhere in the middle here. I actually gotta go ahead and uh, turn down the, the metalness for now, uh, just so we can kind of take a look at some other stuff here. Let's slide this down a little bit too. And I'd make this a, just a little bit darker. So it's always like a fine balance between these um, three attributes, uh, just to kind of get the look that you're going for. All right, so some other areas that are uh, pretty, pretty beneficial would be, um, one thing to be aware of too, you know, you have opacity if you want to just like make the object see through or not. Um, uh, you also have like, uh, the, the specular level. So this is kind of a remnant of an old system before PBR shading came into play. Uh, specular levels were like how much that reflection kind of stands out. I mean, you can control it, it changes it a little bit, but honestly, I just tend to leave this to one and affect the roughness and metalness in order to get my object to look right. Because that's that's a little bit of a, uh, a fake uh, a fake simulation. Um, so normals are only are only gonna be there if you are baking them in. We'll talk about this more in the, uh, in the painter and other courses, but basically normals allow you to add a map to the object that gives it subtle, kind of height and like micro detail in it, like little bumpiness. Um, normals allow you to do it through maps um, that don't actually change the geometry. The height actually can change the geometry by displacing the object. So again, it's just adding a little bit of height to, to the object. Uh, anastrophe, I think is how you pronounce that, is a, a term that, that changes how the object is reflected. So if you think about like an aluminum can, that's like brushed aluminum, it has like more of a thin uh, reflective object on it. Animastrophe kind of simulates that. Emission is uh, what you expect. So if you turn this up, now all of a sudden this object is emitting light and you can change the um, emission color as well. Sheen, so there, there, are, two, um, there are two of these that, that seem somewhat similar. There's Sheen and there's coat. Sheen is like peach fuzz. 
on a like on a peach. Like imagine just like a thin. It's meant to simulate the, like thin fuzziness on the object. Where coat down here is meant to be like a clear coating on things. So it's just just a, a minor variation there. Um, the translucency. Um, this will come up with like anything that kind of has a. Go and turn this up all the way, and then. Uh, turn the absorption distance up a little bit too. So translucency is like light passing through an object, right? And when you turn it up all the way, it really does just kind of look like, uh, it looks like a piece of glass. Um, and then what you can do is you can change that distance so it absorbs a little bit more. You could also change your index of refraction. So index of refraction is like different surfaces and different liquids will refract light in, in different amounts. So like some things will allow you to pass them through entirely. I'm gonna turn this off for just a sec. Ah, sorry about that. Okay, so translucency, yes. It'll essentially um, make an object uh, allow light to pass through. We also have subsurface scattering, which is better designed for skin. So think about like the way that light passes through an ear, or the tip of a nose or something. You see a little bit of that red starting to go through. That's what subsurface scattering does. It kind of gets those levels going. Um, in order to demonstrate one other thing, the uh, IOR, the index of refraction, I do just want to put another piece of geometry in here because it will help demonstrate something. So I'm going to put a cylinder on top of this and then go ahead and make it a, I'll, I'll add our glass shader to it. So what's going to happen is you're going to be able to see the matte character through the cylinder once this activates. Let's see. So now you can see our matte character is super kind of wobbly warped. That's because there's an incident uh, or an index of refraction on the material that kind of bends the light. So think about like the way that different surfaces have different properties that will actually switch that out on them. Now we have total control over that. So um, right now the IOR on this glass is 1.8. The higher that number goes, the more distortion I guess there is. Uh, an IOR of one is like nothing is there. And now you can't even see the glass because it literally it's like the light is passing through in a perfectly straight line um, instead of kind of warbling out. You can actually go under one. So if I go down to 0.5, you can actually see it has a, a, a little bit of a different effect than we would expect because it's kind of, it's almost like a negative value. It's actually like warping it in the opposite direction. You can look up these numbers. Like I know that water has a certain in index of refraction, um, milk, other types of liquid are more transparent liquids than milk would. But basically they all have some sort of IOR on them and you can look that up to kind of create uh, that simulated result. So did all of those, there are additional controls like within translucency, you've got absorption distance and absorption color. So you can start to see what color is kind of bleeding through. Um, but the main reason why I want to show this to you is that each one of these kind of has, um, like they'll come up when you're even messing with default shaders. Like one of them is, I really like this soft plastic. It's kind of like the plastic of a Lego. And as I put this on my object, you can see already, even without the ray tracer turned on, let's fire this up here real quick. Yeah, so there you go. So as you can see, it's a super soft, uh, lovely material that's just like, you just said you can feel it, it's tactile. So I'm gonna go and shot the ray tracer here and we're gonna take a look at the shader a little bit. And so the reason why this is important is like when you go into the material properties of this, you're gonna like, if you wanna change this from yellow to your color, you're like, oh, base color, mm, that's actually not doing anything because the base color isn't driving that value. You wanna go down here to the interior and look down in here and it's actually within the subsurface scattering because that's how it's kind of getting that look, that like undersurface translucent look a little bit is that you're using it there. And now I can go in here and then change my color of it from there. So again, refer back to the documentation online uh, to see some more of the details, but just, I just want to give you like a little overview of how changing those sliders can produce some different looks. And also when you're working with some of the default uh, shaders and default materials inside of Sager, you'll know where to look and how to make adjustments from there.